We've got barbecue back here. You're all invited. Welcome to the Sloopcast. How are you doing today, Kyle? I'm okay, Jared. I'm okay. I unfortunately I didn't get to watch much football this weekend. You know, um, weddings in the fall is uh, is a terrible thing to do. But at, uh, <laughs> at, at, le at least they waited for the bye week. They did. Yes, I will give credit. They um, unplanned to have the. Uh, yeah, I was about <laughs> to say. I I don't I don't know game. I don't. I don't know the couple nearly as well as you know the couple by like by a factor of a, like a minus a hundred, right? But I do at least kind of know them, um, and they did not seem like the type that would uh, no that they, they would no, they that, would plan around a, a an Ohio State bye week. Yeah, but how are you doing, Jared? You know, I didn't. I wasn't driving for eighteen hours this weekend, so I won't. I'm not going to complain. Yeah. I'm gonna, you're gonna have to uh, carry the load this, uh, this episode here, Jared. So Not this let's, episode. Let's get right in. Not this episode. You're, you're gonna be fine this episode. <laughs> Tuesday, I'm gonna have to carry the load. <laughs> All right. Well, so. This is um, not our normal Scarlet and Grade episode uh, since Ohio State did not play this weekend. So instead, we are going to do a midseason report card. Uh, it is, uh, as some of you hate to hear this, uh, the season is halfway done. The regular season, that is. Yes, but the regular season, done. the regular season. Let's not, let's yes, not panic people too bad. Halfway done, and we're going we're gonna to look past the past six games here, and yeah, we'll get some grades out here. Zach says Jared drives the speed limit uh, because this is being recorded. I'm going to say that's true. <laughs> All right, let's let's kick off here, Jared. So Notre Dame, Arkansas State, Toledo, Wisconsin, Rutgers and Michigan State are Ohio State's opponents this year. Uh, lo looking back at it, especially especially how piss poor Notre Dame has been so far yeah. this year. And, uh, and especially, and especially after this weekend, losing to Stanford here, ugh, it's, it has not been a, a great schedule in terms of quality opponents for Ohio state so far, but it, it, it does get a little better. <laughs> the second half. Stewart asks Freeman over under two years. Over. Let's say let's say two and a half. Over. It's over. Um, I'll say over, but like he can't he can't continue at this pace, or he's done next year. Like if if next year's like this year, he's done. You you get two seasons because let's I mean let, let's be let's be honest here. A lot of times you want to give like a coach three seasons, right? But a lot of times when you want to give a coach three seasons, it's because like they're coming in to clean up a bad program. Freeman was not coming in to clean up a bad program. Notre Dame was in good shape. And now let's be very, I think Notre Dame would be doing a lot better if they still had their starting quarterback. Um, <laughs> most teams in college football can't afford to lose their starting quarterback. No. Um, yeah. the vast majority of teams, the super vast majority of teams, Ohio, if Ohio State need to roll with McCord for a few weeks, they could do it. McCord's McCord's that good. Um, Bama could roll with their backup quarterback, but for a little bit, but it would be a severe downgrade. I've seen the other guy play. He's fine. Um, Notre Dame was forced to uh, look at NC State and we'll talk about NC State in more detail on the Tuesday episode. NC State turned to mush without Le without uh i almost said levy um without now i can't get leary. leary thank you i can't get leary out of my head he's jt barrett-esque uh you the the backup bama quarterback is that who you mean Stuart? yeah okay all right so uh, look looking at looking at the stats here jared for for ohio state so far this this year uh, <laughs> there's not too many areas to really improve in. I can you're, find a couple. I can find a couple. Not not too much improvement here. So, number one in points points per game, forty eight point eight. Number two in yards per game. Uh, improvement. 
number one in points per play and number one in yards per play. Now that is I'll, just, I'll say that that is that is just uh, video game esque numbers here. Number two in third down conversion percentage, and you'd know damn well they'd be number one if we were only counting actual competition snaps. And they are number one, Kyle, scoring a 100%. You want to talk about no room? Well, I mean, field goals. But you want to talk about like little to no room for success. Ohio State has scored every single time they've entered the red zone. 100% scoring percentage in the red zone. That's I, know, I know you don't. Yeah, I don't. I don't think you have that stat in here, Jared, but I believe they're really high on um, touchdown touchdowns. percentage. I think they're, mm -hmm. I want to say they're in the nineties. I, I don't, yeah. you're right. I don't have that number in front of me. But it's fine. It's fine though. But yeah. You, you know, it's also no, really, but Kyle, really I will, just before, before we get too far away from that, I'll just want to say we kind of knew the offense was going to be good, right? I think what we are really watching out for here is the defense. So how, how's the defense doing? Yeah, defense here. So points per game, uh, eighth. Woo! <laughs> Woo. Remember, Yards Kyle, Kyle, let, let's let's rewind for a second to a to a preseason to a preseason uh, press conference featuring uh, first Ryan Day and then later Coach Knowles. Ryan Day is like, you know, our goal. Did he say top 20? Did he say top 25? I forget. But one of the reporters asked him, what's a realistic goal for the defense this year? And Ryan Day, I think he said 25. Top 25 defense. He may have said 20. I forget exactly. But that's essentially what he said. And Kyle, do you remember what Knowles said in response? <laughs> he said, I, I wish he said top 10. Now, do you remember what I said in response to Noel saying that? I'll, I'll Remind fill it. Me, Remind I me, said Jared. in, you can go, you can go watch the episode. You can go listen to the episode. I said, don't teach, don't teach. Wow. Okay. Let me, let me try that again. I said, don't tease me, Coach Knowles. I go, that is not a realistic expectation. For Ohio State has a top 10 defense this year, they're going to win a national title. So don't tease me like that, Coach Knowles. I said something along those lines. Number eight in points against. But it gets Number, better, Jared. Yeah, it gets go ahead. better, though. Number four in opponent yards per game. Yeah, and in case anyone's worried, oh, well, Ohio State just had a bye week. Maybe that's skewing. No, this is these are per game numbers. These are per game numbers. Mm -hmm. Opponent uh, opponent points per play, uh, 14th, which that tells me that they're not getting that many plays. In, right. Uh, opponent yards per play, seventh. Uh, opponent third down conversion, fifth at 27% third down conversions yeah and ju just so we're very clear when he says fifth that's from the perspective of the defense just yes. like so that's very good for ohio state but no yeah, no mad you one do area, not have one, voice privileges yeah one area for improvement though opponent yeah found... red opponent red zone scoring percentage yeah uh 90.9 percent yeah the Nine zero point nine one percent. Basically, if the other team's entering the red zone, they're getting they're getting points. Ohio State ranks a hundred and seventh in the country on that. Now, again, I I, I kind of wish I had pulled the stats for specifically touchdowns because that's that's I, I mean that that's the name of the game, right? That's the name of the game. But yeah, the. Uh, yeah, you I mean, this is not a defense and, you know, we talk about, you know, where could there be improvement? This is not a defense that necessarily forces a ton of turnovers. No. Yes, and we'll yes. see those stats a little bit further down as well. Uh, so mm -hmm. when the other team gets into the red zone, you know, inside the 20, most college kickers are going to make that. So without a turnover or without the other team going for it, they're probably going to score. Now, could Ohio State do more to create more turnovers? Maybe. 
Uh, am I going to uh, rag on them too hard about that after they just turned a bottom 5% defense into a top 5% defense? I am not. <laughs> yeah. Let's let's not let's not fuck with what's working. So one one set that's really interesting because that I'm seeing here that you posted, Jared. I mean, we we give we we see so much credit towards CJ Stroud and the amazing wide receiver group that we have here. But honest, but Ohio State rushes the ball more often than they do pass. Now, some of that can be skewed yeah. because of of late game. Yeah. Um, play calling and all that, but still, it's it's about fifty six percent to forty four to forty four percent. I would I would have loved Russian the ability place. to like limit that to the first half. <laughs> like, what's what's their run versus pass percentage in the first half? Yeah. Uh, yeah. One one thing that really disappointed me last couple of years and really really impressed this year is the rushing attack or on, on the defense. Uh, that was one thing that Ohio State just struggled. And we saw that against the Michigan game and even at times against Utah and um, heck, even the Oregon game um, a year ago, being able to stop the run. And it always seemed like if somebody's going to run it, they're, they're going to get at least three yards before yeah. anybody gets gets a hand on them. Well, now Ohio State's really turned that around. Uh, number seven in opponent yards per rush, and that at three yards. On and average. that's without a ton of sacks, too. Um, yes. Which, which can skew those numbers. Uh, yeah, Absolutely. it's... And, like, this is what you... Like, I don't know... And we'll talk a little bit more about the Michigan game on, on tomorrow's episode, on the, on the Tuesday episode, on Collegiate Chaos... And like, say what you want to say about Michigan and who they've played. Say, say all you want to say about that. Their offensive line, especially from a running perspective, is really good. Sorry. And I, I, Jared, you said a good thing about Mich Don't say good things about Michigan. I'm sorry. Their offensive line is, is real good. They have a really nice offensive line. Ohio State is going to need all of their run stopping horses to stop the Michigan run attack. All of them. Absolutely. I mean, you had, and again, you can, you can look at the schedule that the teams have played and all that, but, but it's going to go down. Michigan scored or they rushed over 400 yards against a top 10 rushing defense. That's 400 yards. That's, that's just crazy. Again, I think we all knew that they're, you know, they're, they're paper tigers or I guess paper lions at Penn State. Like, they, I, they, yeah, I, I know. I know. Not, yes, a, not I know actually a top 10 defense. Anyone, but, but still, you put up, I don't care. I don't care I what agree. team, what team it is, 400 rushing yards. I That's, agree. It's a lot against the Big Ten team, even if that Big Ten team is a down Penn State. I, I totally agree. Yeah. All right. Back to, back to Ohio State here. Nobody wants us to continue to talk about Michigan here. So, um, so talked about the rushing here, passing here. So, passing stats: Ohio State is number six in completion at seventy-one percent completion, ten point eight yards per pass attempt, which is good for third. I'm curious who who the top two are, Jared. <laughs> if Ohio State is third, who's one and two? Um, if you want to keep reading, I might be able to find that. Yeah, I, I think Tennessee, Tennessee is probably one of those teams. I, I, I agree, Nomad and um, uh, Buckeye Zach. Uh, let's see. Also here, yards per game. Ohio State is 16th at 315 per game. And the defensive side here, holding um, opponents to 57% completion, which is good for 26th best in the country on defense, 6.3 yards per pass at uh, 6.3 yards, good for 19th, and opponents yards per game at 160 yards per game, which is good for sixth best in the country. 
I don't think I'm going to find this uh, in a way oh, that right. is easy or fast enough. Yeah. So, so, to... the, so at least the on the offensive on the offensive side here, uh, no, no, no surprise really to us about about Ohio State's passing attack. Even with JSN going down, it, it seemed like Ohio State just went on without a hitch. They, they, it's it just. It's just crazy how great this uh, this offense is, this passing attack. And, yeah, it, it's pretty much what we expected here. Yeah, uh, it, it's – I already talked about the defense, right? Like expectations for the defense, what do we want to see out of the defense. We already talked about all that. Um, but the other thing that Kyle and I were talking about a lot during the preseason was – Okay, but what about the offensive line? And they had what it was only one returning starter playing at the same position, right? Is that right? So. Two, two. It was two. Uh, Whipler and um, Jones. Um, center and guard. No, center and and tackle. Yeah. Um. Paris Johnson Jr., a returning starter, but moved from guard to tackle. And then they had two brand new guards. Um, so, you know, that's a lot of change at a position that is not Ohio State's recruiting strength. Mm -hmm. When the wide receivers left, we all sort of like, OK, but we got to we got like more. We got more in the back. Don't worry about the wide receivers leaving offensive line. A little bit more of a concern. Again, they don't recruit. That's one of their weakest recruiting points in the past four or five years. So, but still, but still, Jared, you you look at the numbers here. Ohio but the State. offensive line is performing amazingly. Um, yeah, may I, Kyle, better than last year's offensive line? Statistically, yes. <laughs> Statistically, Ohio State, I would Ohio say State, they are a better fifth is um 15th at best in the country of rushing yards per game and ninth best and QB sacks percentage. So only about 2% of, of the, um, of all of CJ Stroud's throws or dropbacks have led to sacks. And surprisingly, this is no, this was a surprise. I'll keep that in mind. I, Nomad. I didn't think Ohio State sacked that many, but but apparently, in percentage-wise, Ohio State is 14th best in sack percentage on defense at almost 8.5% of the time that uh, Ohio State's defense gets a sack. That's pretty good. It's not bad. It's not bad. Um, Kyle, are we, are we ready... To to start handing out grades, are we there yet? Yeah. Is there anything else you want to talk about statistically first? No, I think I think that's it. Um, I know we mentioned this before. I won't spend too much time, but I think seeing not seeing too many sacks from our from our defensive end was something that was a little surprising so far for how talented of our defensive ends we've had, but. Um, but I think, but I think what we've seen this year so far is that the stats aren't going to aren't going to show how disruptive they are. By the way, Kyle, I just I, I did I did find some interesting information. One, because uh, we were talking about the pass per complete or pass per yeah pass per completion before, and who was better than Ohio State. Well, I want to say one if we do pass per attempt, which is a better stat in my opinion, because incompletions work against you which it, they should, right? Um, if you rush for zero yards, it should hurt your average. If you pass for zero yards, it should hurt your average. So if we, if we look at pass per attempt, Ohio State moves up to number three. Okay. And yes, Tennessee is ahead of them at number two. Huh, who's number one then? Before we get there, I want to say that the, the same team... Uh, that is number one in pass per attempt is also number one in pass per completion, where if you remember, Ohio State was number five. Number four is Tennessee. Kyle, I will give you 
a dozen. I'll give you a dozen guesses. You won't get uh, one of the three teams other than Tennessee ahead of Ohio State. I'm not even going to try to guess. I'm not even going to try to guess. Come on, just rat- rattle them off. Don't even put much thought into it. G- give me 10 teams. Oregon. No. Um, Toledo. No. Um, Ole Miss. No. Look at the know. chat for help if you want to. They're they're giving you some good Coastal hints. Coastal Carolina? No. UTSA? No. Army? Yes. <laughs> Army? <laughs> Army is number one in both categories. That's number funny. two in pass per completion. Yes. Good job, Nomad. Oh, guys, we're, we haven't even hit the best part yet. In the yards per completion, number two is Air Force. Number three is Navy. That's awesome. <laughs> if you want to dominate this, if you really want to dominate this stat, never throw. <laughs> Just never throw the ball. And when you do, right. bomb it deep. That's awesome. That's a great stat, Jared. All right, let's get let's get to our. I wasn't going to totally derail things unless it was good. You got to trust me on that. All right, let's get to the gradings here, Jared. I I feel like I feel like pretty much all of these gradings, it's going to be similar to um, Ohio State did against uh, Michigan State. In my mind, I feel I feel like that was a pretty good. Um, yeah, I think I think that's a pretty good average of how Ohio State did. But we'll we'll go through it though. So we'll we'll quickly go through the so gradings let's... of of them. And, let, and let's and let's base this on our preseason expectations. That's that's the scale I think we should should grade it on. Yes. Yes, Nomad. Yes, Nomad. The the struggles do count as well. Yes. So let's let's start with the offensive coaching. Uh, offensive I, coaching gets an an A plus. I, I they've yeah, done. It's it's got to be an A plus. Nothing Just, wrong. I mean, you you have you have one of the best offenses in the country it's the best points it's the second best yards per game it's the best points per play it's yeah it, you, you can't do any better than that a plus agreed uh quarterback uh, I, by the way I we got he, we got enough a pluses in the chat for the chat to also be a plus right. um, why, why did you why did you skip just coaching coaching because i, th- I th- okay okay go ahead Quarterback, quarterback. I, I, I'd give CJ Stroud an A here. I think, I think recently he's starting to. I think there's been some plays where he's trying to, or some games he's trying to, trying to do too much, and we've seen turnovers the past. I think three straight games now. He's, he's turned the ball over. Hopefully that's not a trend. He'll continue doing it. So I think I'll give CJ Stroud just a solid A. I think that's fair because we we have to grade CJ. We, we came into the season thinking Heisman candidate. You know what I mean? Like the three three ints were bad ones. Yeah, none none of them were like. I don't. I'm pretty sure none of them were like goofily tipped. You know, sort of weird. Like they were Correct. either bad decisions or bad throws. No, that's that's false. That's false. Uh, the last week's was actually the wide receiver's fault. And I think you maybe make it's, an argument that his first interception could have also been the wide receiver's fault. Um, it's it's still it's still partially his fault because him and his receivers weren't on the same page. So, yeah, but one of them was on the correct page. Yeah. Okay. Um, but right. but what again, you, I think what we would you grade C.J. Stroud? Yeah, I think it's I think a solid A is fine. Um, he blindly threw it, but that's spikes. That's what you're supposed to do. That's kind. I mean, that's what you're so you're supposed to throw it when he starts to break. This is one of the things I complained about so much back in the JT Barrett days. He would wait for the guy to get to the end of the route before throwing it. And by the time you do that, especially when you have JT Barrett's arm, by the time you do that, the defensive back has time to recover and and defend the pass. Um, Right. But yeah, the uh, so based on and again, I think I think he's giving an A plus performance. 
but I'm we're gonna give I'm gonna give him an A largely because our expectations were so high coming in and we're we're grading it based off of expectation. Yep. All right. Offensive line, I'd give them an A plus. It's yeah, one hundred yeah. Best, one of the best in um preventing sacks, leading uh, just an outstanding rushing attack here. Yeah, A plus for the offensive line. This this offensive line group is every bit as good of a pass blocking group as last year's team and last year's team was aside from whipler and and i I guess also um paris johnson jr but they were veterans across the line right um Uh, how many how many sacks so far four four sacks all year yeah four Uh, sacks in 160 well technically 164 uh drop back pass drop backs so Yeah, this is every bit as good of a passing offensive line, pass blocking offensive line as last year's. And last year's was a damn good pass blocking offensive line. And they're a better, I would say, maybe significantly better run blocking offensive line this year versus last year, especially if we're talking about like short run, short yardage, obvious running situations. Yep. All right. Running backs. I I give the running backs an A plus here as well. Uh, especially with the injuries that has happened to um, the three running backs, essentially. I mean, you have, you have your, you have your third string out all year and your first and second string are, have been injured and the other picking up the pace there. And then you had the other running backs um, picking up the slack too. And it's just a lot of, a lot of credit to the offensive line to, um, to help them out though. But I give the running backs an A plus here. Just an outstanding job so far. Um, uh, seven, Nomad 7. says seven point eight, 7. 8 for uh, for Mayan Williams and uh, Trevion Henderson has six point three yards uh, per carry. So uh, Nomad says um, he says just an A, and then he says I want Trey to be more downhill. I agree. Again. Like with CJ Stroud, our expectations were sky high for these running backs, especially Trey. And I think he is experiencing the same thing that we saw out of J.K. Dobbins in J.K. Dobbins sophomore year, where I think he's trying to break stuff open instead of just taking what's there and allowing the play to break itself open. Um, And now I will say um, against Michigan State and you know, I think this actually plays into it when he was given the opportunity to just be the guy and he didn't have to look over his shoulder at Mayan Williams. He was running much better. Mm -hmm. Um, So I I think maybe we're correcting that, but I'm I'm just going to do a solid a on the running backs. Okay. All right. Fair enough. Wide receivers. A plus Jared like <laughs> yeah it, it's i i don't know how you can give it less than an a plus here to be to be honest agreed our I expectations were sky really high remember that many plays where the wide receiver just drops the ball it seems like anytime it touches the receiver's hands it's it's caught yeah and there have been some communication issues and but very few and far between though but when you have three new starters, I mean, they think would get maybe just an A, except for the fact that Smith and Jigba has been out basically the entire year. Yeah. If you factor that in, it's a solid A plus. Ohio State has three brand new starters on the offense at wide receiver. Because JSN has basically not played this year. I don't know if you posted this, Jared, or if it was on Discord here. Somebody posted a a stat about the first X amount, first like five games, and it showed the numbers for the wide receipt, the top three wide receivers from last year. And then you look for this year, yeah. and they're they look almost identical in terms of catches and yards and touchdowns just with three completely different players yeah it's just mind-boggling yeah um and just imagine like if they had been playing (laughs) all game um Um, 
it is all right the next group here is chat's favorite group here uh that is of course the tight ends what would you grade the tight ends this year jared um a plus um i i i know that like maybe people you know we always joke about year of the tight end and people might want more uh reception statistics but like y'all y'all just haven't been paying attention to ohio state uh in every year since ricky dudley if you thought that this was going to become a pass happy uh tight end group um what i'm very happy about is that again if we're comparing this to like preseason expectations we even know who the starter was going to be and we started it's towards the end of camp we started you know finding out and hearing that it was going to be Cade Stover. but we went from like who's the starter going to be to like this guy and he's rock solid Stover makes the catches he needs to make when he needs to make them, when he's asked to make them, and he is a great blocker. He's a yeah, great and, and blocker. That, that was, he also that, that needs thing. to get credit. We give all the offensive yeah. line credit and we give the running backs credit for that, you know, excellent yards per carry stat. Yeah. That, we also exactly need to give Kate saying. Stover credit for that. That's exactly what I was going to say here. He he helps um I uh, see a lot of those edges for those running backs to, to get open there. So yeah, a plus a plus for the, um, for the tight ends as well. It's just, yeah, I've been, we, this was a big question mark for us coming into this year and because the expectations in the year, yeah. it's, it, they, they've um, exceeded beyond what I thought they would have done here. All right, and we're moving on to the defensive side. So defensive coaching, going from what Jared said, like bottom 5% to top 5%. Uh, it's How they went from a defense ranked in the 100s. Hey, 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 you missed a position. Uh, full, fullbacks are included in tight ends. Yes. They're, they're, we, we count them as one group. Um. No, Zach just goes no. <laughs> uh, defensive. I mean, this team went from being in the bottom twenty, the bottom twenty twenty five in most categories, and our expectations was for them to reverse that so hard that they would be in the top twenty five. I don't even know if that was an expectation. I think that was a hope. And now they're rolling in the top 10. I can't put enough pluses at the end of this. A Kyle. Yeah, I agree. It's the turnaround that coach Noah has done to this, to this team this year. Just absolutely bananas. Yeah, absolutely bananas. And, and give, and, and, and give credit to the to the other new coaches in the room as well. Um, yeah, yeah, absolutely. All right. Defensive ends. <laughs> Knowles for dictator for life. Our defensive coordinator is now a dictator. I, I You know what? Right, I don't even know if I'm against it. Defensive ends here, Jared. <clears throat> I give the defensive ends so far this year an A. I, I'm not giving them the A plus here. Um, I mentioned it briefly. Uh, the beginning of the show and we've mentioned it a number of times in the past few episodes here they're putting they're so dominant that the stat the stats do not show it they they really don't um lack of sacks is concerning well it's the it's everybody else that's picking them up it's it's because of how the defensive scheme is the d defensive ends don't really need to make those plays it's it's the linebackers that's really making the plays or you have just uh, in the next position coming up here, uh, Mike Hall is just <laughs> the defensive tackles is just blowing it up as well too. I, I I could go probably down to an A minus, but I'll I'll still stick with an A for for my defensive end grading here. Uh, I I'd like to see more stats from them. Ab absolutely, and that's what every Buckeye fan wants to see. They want to see these pass rushers get the sacks. They want to see them start getting. A lot more um, as the season goes along here, but they've just been so dominant right now and getting the quarter, getting those quarterback pressures too. So solid A. 
Uh, Nomad asks, what are the tackle for loss numbers with the defensive ends? Uh, Sawyer, oh, how, how does this not have tackle for losses? I'll pull it up. Just give me a second. Okay. Yeah, Kyle will pull it up. Uh, the By the way, I just want to say something. Of the top four sack getters, uh, two of them are defensive ends. And one of them is Jean Baptiste, which was like not who we were expecting to be one of the leading sack getters, uh, especially among the defensive ends. The other one is Jack Sawyer. Uh, and yeah, they only have two each. The lack of statistic performance by the defensive ends means little to nothing to me. They're crashing the outside. They're forcing the quarterback to step up and into all of the chaos where the defensive tackles are eating them up. You can't look at, and by the way, we, we also need to remember when we're talking about these defensive ends, they're not sack specialists. I know sometimes we think about them that way. They aren't. When we talk about the defensive ends, we also need to talk about how Ohio State is currently number four in yards per game and number seven in yards per play and how they're number eight in points per, better say that, uh, number eight points per game, number four opponent yards per game, um, opponent yards per play, number seven, third down conversion, number five. The defensive ends don't just play football when there's a passing play. Mm -hmm. If the All quarterback right. so had four to five seconds with no pressure, that would be a problem, but that's not happening. And they are playing complimentary roles. Thank you, Zach. Or excuse me. Yeah. <laughs> that's the second time I've done that to you, Spikes. Thank you. It's, it's the Z. It throws me off. Thank you, Spikes. Um, right. So, uh, John Baptiste. So here, here's some, here's some numbers here. So John Baptiste has two and a half uh, tackles for loss and uh, two sacks for the year. Uh, Sawyer has four tackles for loss, two sacks, and uh, JT Tui Malau has three tackles for loss and zero sacks. Yeah, it's the you look at all of the tackles and all of the sacks that the linebackers and the defensive tackles are getting that is being created by the defensive ends. It's not, we, we can't, we can't judge this group based off of just sack numbers. That's silly. Agreed. They get an A plus they've been great this year. Okay. All right. Um, defensive tackles, A plus. I mean, th this, this should be the uh, Mike Hall. Uh, position here because <laughs> Mike Hall has just been so dominant here. I, I'd, gi I'd give the defensive tackles an A plus here. Uh, just by the so, way, Vincent's so also had a good year so, 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 so far this year. So disruptive, and they're really, really penetrating to um, to force the run plays of the opponents to to change where they're going, and when they hesitate, that's why you're seeing Eichenberg uh, and Chambers or Chambers, excuse me, really getting, you got it right. The first, time. I got it right. First time Chambers uh, <laughs> um, are make are making plays there. It's yeah. I, they're, they're, they're so disruptive here and yeah. A plus for the defensive tackles. Um, I'm going to just do an A. Um, if I were just grading my call, it would be an A plus. Um, but I think I'm going to do just an A here. Um, no, I'm not. I'm going to, I'm going to do an A plus. I'm just yeah, a little, I yeah, I, yeah, I just went on the whole thing about the rushing statistics and everything. Right. I can't just all of a sudden turn back on that. I'm just wondering where, where, where where's, where's Ty Leak? I, what about Ty Leak? What do you want? What wh do you want to know? Where is he? That's what I'm asking. Uh, He's, so, he hasn't so far, been playing he has, much. We had all of has, this preseason hype about, 
like mm-hmm. he's lost some weight. He's going to be able to play more. We're going to, you know what I mean? Like we're making sure that he's going to have the stamina to stay on the field a bunch. And we just like, haven't seen him. Yeah. It's if you, if you look at the, um, look at uh, his st- Secret. Zach, yeah. Zach says, I think Tyleek's hurt. He's not been on. I, I'm not going to say any because I don't know. I don't know if I don't I don't think I, it would be accurate to say he hasn't been on any of the um, injury reports, but he's yeah, not he's, been he's on all in, of them. He's played in every single game so far. There you go. Now, is it going to be kind of like how many plays has he played? I Spikes, I did you just yeah. drop the Z from your name because I'm an idiot? <laughs> oh. Now I feel he could bad. be playing her. Yeah, but I I haven't heard. I haven't heard though. <gasps> all right, uh, all right. Let's go to the line. Spikes, Jared. Austin literally changed his Twitter handle because I'm incapable of reading and pronouncing things. I am a mess when it comes to reading and pronouncing things. And everyone else needs to like stop <laughs> catering to me about it. All right, Jared, they got to move on here. Linebackers yeah. is the next position here. Expectations, expectations and what we've seen so far this year. Anybody gives less than an A plus here. Uh, they're a hater. They are yeah. a hater if they don't give an A plus for the linebackers. Just one hundred percent complete, complete, n- complete night dirt. I can't talk. Just complete one eighty of what we've seen the linebackers from the past few years to first year under Jim Knowles, and just how much improvement we see we've seen here. Just A+. Nomad plus. says, "I want to see more rotation." We had rotation at the linebacker position last year. Is that what you want? It didn't help. It didn't help. <laughs> Is that what you want? I mean, not enough for for some people. Names not mentioned uh, who who stormed off the field. But yeah, the. Seems like none this year. Yeah, it's it's almost exclusively and I say almost, but it's been almost exclusively Eichenberg and Chambers. And by the way, with the way they're performing, I am fine with that. Uh, concern is getting spent against higher end opponents. If that's what happens, you can rotate more against the higher end opponents. Um, exactly. And you're in a position where you have two guys who are the solid guys. And therefore you can sub out one of them. So you still have an experienced veteran on the team who can sort of help out the young guy. Hey, just so you know, this is what we're doing. This is what's happening. I I think one of the things that we heard in the preseason, Ryan Day talk a lot about was like emphasizing leadership. And I think if two, if two of your best leaders are at the linebacker position and you want your leaders out there, you can finish that sentence on your own. All right, Jared, uh, corners this year. Corners have been below going expectations. Into season, going, in, going into the season, we knew that Ohio State was very short in numbers for the corner positions here. Excuse me. Um, yeah, very short in, in terms of numbers for the corners. And so, some of the players um, haven't been playing as well as what we've seen would expect them to play here and there have been I, injuries let's acknowledge there's that. been injuries too i I'd, I'd probably give the corners a probably like a probably a b minus i would say i think b minus is 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 a fair uh grade yeah like if a, if like just meeting expectations is like an a minus or a b plus then they're they're below that um, mm-hmm. there have been injury issues and we did, we knew from the beginning of the year that they were thin at that position, but we thought they were going to be pretty top heavy. Um, we thought Denzel Burke was going to, you know, we, we were getting ready to like found, you know, Burke Island 
you know, lock them up with anyone. They're going to be out of the game. And it hasn't been, it hasn't been the case. Um, yep. and, I, and again, he's an amazingly talented guy. Uh, he has some great coaches behind him. I think they're going to figure it out. And I, you know, I'm, I, I don't want to, I don't want to like sound the alarm but to this point in the season, which is what we're grading based off of our preseason expectations, they've not met expectations. Kyle, I think your B minus is perfectly fair. All right, cool. So depth we got a issues mixier, and we got a scheme of a... placing. Well, hold on. Uh, Zach says depth issue and schemes placing them on islands. The problem, I, I don't think that's a, a good excuse. Zach, or the depth issues, maybe there could be fatigue and whatnot there. OK, but but. The scheme placing them on islands, that's what we expected them to do, especially with Burke. That's the point of the defense. Be aggressive and get enough stops. Yes, Spikes is correct on that. But also so, what you have to keep in mind, Zach or anyone else who might be concerned about the scheme, the corners are in position. And a lot of the big plays that we've seen the corners give up, the corners have been there. They've been on the guy. They just aren't finishing. They aren't getting their hand in the correct spot. They aren't knocking it down. They aren't picking it off. They aren't forcing it out of the wide receiver's hands if they do catch the ball. I, I don't think you can blame Scheme when they're in the guy's back pocket as they're making the catch. Yep. Uh, so we've got here B minus, C plus, and... Uh and an F here. <laughs> so I'll just, I'll just average to a C plus for, for the chat here. All right, though, okay. And we have the safeties. What do you I, the safety? Uh, a plus. Uh, we, we didn't know what we were getting with the safeties coming into the year. We knew that safeties were not uh, a bad issue last year. The safeties played. I mean, aside. Yeah. You know, uh, aside from one person. The safeties were largely pretty terrible last year. Um, and then all of a sudden, like, we felt like we were thin at safety. We think we only had, like, one proven guy at safety. And all of a sudden, we're going to start playing three safeties. It kind of, it was a huge question mark coming into the year. And I think they've been nothing but exceptional. I think they get an A+. plus. Yeah, I'd, I'd give them an A. I, I I think there is room for improvement for the safety group, and I really really like what I've seen so far here. So I, I'll give um, I'll give the uh, the safeties an A, and it looks like chat here A, B plus here. So yeah, they I think they agree to um, room for improvement as well too. But but stellar stellar job so far this season. In the last position, in the last position here is special teams. I honestly I'd I'd probably give the special teams a B minus so far this year. Yeah, it's yeah, it's tough because this encompasses so much. Um I think the punters and the kickers have been good. Well, I mean the the kickers I mean they're kicking 66% from field goal range right now. Not not gr not a great percentage right now. Uh, and the punter pun, punting has been has been pretty good for the most part. Uh, kickoff return, um, I, I they're think kicking the, the ball. I think the last game against Michigan State really showed some things about that the kick coverage needs to improve. There, uh, punt, punt coverage is perfectly fine, but kick, kicking and kickoff uh, coverage really needs improvement. And of course, Jared, yeah, stop kicking the no, ball out of bounds. We, we still have no uh, return touchdowns. Yeah, it's uh, like a like a C plus, I think, is is probably pretty fair here. Um, okay. Ruggles only needs to be there for Pats. Yeah. Coverage looks like Meyer is on the sidelines. It's not the coverage. It's the I it's like this insistence on trying to like basically place it in this tiny little box right on the sideline right inside the five like just kick the ball out of bounds and let the defense play not out of bounds out of the back of the end zone stop kicking out of bounds start kicking it into the end zone yep all right um 
All right, and we'll, we'll do Buckeye leaves to uh, to end the, uh, this episode here, Jared. By the way, real real, uh, so, real real quick, Hickman, Ransom, Proctor. All three of them are in the top six in tackle and tackles for the Ohio State defense. I'm just saying I was the only one that gave the safeties an A plus, And I think that's false and bad. I think Hickman's been amazing this year. I think Ransom's been amazing this year. I think McAllister's been amazing this year. Uh, Proctor, when he's come in, has been, uh, I think he had like a bit of a rough start to the season, but uh like in the latter half of the half of the season we've seen, he's, he's played excellently. Um, I think the safeties are playing great. And I just, I think they deserve an A plus, especially for a position group that we didn't have high expectations of coming into the season. All right, let's get Buckeye leaves for the positions here. So, one on offense, one on defense, and a wild card of your choice. Let's start with the offense here, Jared. Who do, who do you give your Buckeye Leaf to for the first half? Uh, sometimes the boring answer is the right answer. It's C.J. Stroud. He's he's the Vegas leader for the Heisman Trophy. Um, you know, and it's weird because he's the quarterback was one was the only position that Kyle didn't give an A plus on the offense. If, it, if the chart here is accurate and that, that's where I'm going with the Buckeye leaf, but that's, it's really only because our expectations were so high. Uh, man, because I, he has been excellent. Man, I, I know this is, I, I'm going to say the offensive line, but I got to pick, I got to pick yeah, someone that's a, that's here, a, but the, the Buckeye leaf is the offensive line here. Cause they're, do that. they're making, Pick someone. I know. I know. So I'm. I'll. I'll pick someone different here, and I'll. I'll, I'll go. I'll go with a uh, Abuka. I'll go with Abuka here. Uh, he's. He's finally. He's finally getting his. His chance to really shine here, and leading the team in receptions, yards, average, um, and has the longest reception for the team as well. Too doesn't quite have the touchdowns that uh, uh, Marv Marv has Marvin Harrison Jr. But everything else, Ibuka is just excelling at. So I'll give I'll give um, Ibuka my my Buckeye leaf here. Chat, who do you want to give your offensive Buckeye leaf to? Let's see, Zach. Yeah, we got one, said we got one for Whipler, got Whipler and Spike said Stroud. Uh, just just put I guess put Whipler since I said Stroud. Okay, uh, that's fair. All right, and defensive side here. I I'll go first, Jared. I'm probably going to steal your pick, but whatever the whatever. I'm going to go with uh, I'm going to go with Tommy Pickles. I'm going to go with Tommy uh, Pickle uh, Eichenberg. We're gonna we're gonna I'm gonna pick Eichenberg here. Leads the team by far in tackles. Uh, has two and a half Polo sacks tackles. for. Yeah, he has two and a half sacks for the. Uh, for the year and i think he has the most tackles yep he has the most tackles for loss as well uh, no i'm sorry he has he's second in tackles for loss um and uh mike hall is the one who has more more tackles for loss than him but i'll, I'll stick with uh eichenberg for my buckeye leaf on defense i was i you're you're correct kyle i was gonna pick eichenberg um but in order to, to spread the wealth around a little bit i'll i'll call an audible and go for my call um, leading tackles for loss. One of the leaders in sacks has been the leader in sacks. The leader in sacks um, has just been routinely disruptive along the defensive line. Yeah, absolutely. Chat. Oh, uh, chat says all. Chat says all. Chat says all. All right, and the wild card. You know, my my wild card because we thought because we thought this year. It was all Trey Hundo. Trey Hundo was going to just be disruptive and all that. I'm going to I'm going to give my wild card to Chop. I'm going to give it to my Mike Williams. agrees with you. He's 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 stepped in here and has just been lights out here, just running with emphasis here. Seven point eight yards 
per uh, per rush attempt here. Eight eight touchdowns for the year. I got chopped for my, for my uh, third Buckeye leaf. It's an excellent pick. I'm going to go with Paris Johnson Jr. Uh, Paris Johnson Jr. is the left tackle on what is one of the best offensive lines I've ever seen Ohio State have. Um, he is, uh, or he has never given up a sack at Ohio State. And again, when you look at all of those rushing numbers, and of course the left tackle matters immensely in that. Uh, Paris Johnson Jr. has been an absolute monster for Ohio State this year. And, you know, he's an offensive lineman, so you don't you don't see that in the stats. But and, and in large part, like Kyle was saying, when he's looking at the offense, he kind of just needs someone to stand in someone to represent the offensive line. And, and that's largely what I'm doing here as well. Um, yeah, you, I, I can't pick the entire offensive line. I, I have to pick someone and, you know, I'm picking Paris Johnson Jr. Uh, but I. What I'd love to do is give it to the entire offensive line. All right. Fair enough. All right, Jared. Uh, I think that's it. That is our mid season review here. Anxious to see the Buckeyes back out, back out onto the field uh, this weekend as they uh, go on the road to Iowa, Iowa here. Wait, no, they're home. They're home to Iowa. I'm right. sorry. They're home to Iowa. So <laughs> it's probably a good thing. And hey, we never play in Iowa game. ever again. It might have been a night game, too, for all we yeah. know. But <laughs> by the way, but real yeah, quick, looking forward to that. Just in case we had had extra time at the end of the show and we we don't, um, we copied and pasted our uh, preseason superlative list into these notes. And hey, maybe we'll go back through them. But we were we were in out of time. We were having fun grading everyone. Um, yep. But Kyle, I think I do want to pick out one of these questions. Just one of these questions. Most likely to win an end of the year position trophy. Who, who's most likely to win a Heisman, not the Heisman, but the whatever for their group? Man, I, you know, the easy pick is probably Stroud, but I feel like a lot of people are really paying att more attention to Hooker right now especially after his yeah and that's um, especially after his win over they're being prisoners of family here they're being prisoners of the moment so they, they only they, think they that because the bama game was yesterday i i you know i, I still would have to pick stroud like it can't, i don't think it's any of the running backs because they're, they're sharing the load there and i think the same with the receivers maybe maybe it could be marvin harrison jr with uh, all the highlight catches that he's been making here. But I, I think I'll still stick with Stroud. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to go a bit left field with this one. Kyle, do you know what the Broyles Award is? Are you going to Pickles? No, that's not the that's not the Broyles Award. Does anyone in the chat knows what, know what the Broyles Award is? I, I got a nope from Nomad. A no from Spikes. The Broyles Award goes to the best assistant coach of the year. I'm giving mine to Knowles. The turnaround in the defense has been. I feel like that's cheating, guys. Do you, Why? Do you agree, guys? It's a pre. It's a pre. It's a, a postseason award. All right. We never win those. But. Maybe I feel argue, I feel like we have one Broyles. because we are we're not I'm not going to argue because we're we're over on time here so I'll 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 let you have it though. You let me have it. What? Who do you think you are thinking you can allow me to have something? Uh, Kyle, uh, okay, end of the show, end of the show, end of the show. Um, everyone, please be sure to, uh, if you, if you listen to the podcast version of this on the odd on just like on audio, then please feel free to, uh, jump over to YouTube, 
maybe give us a watch over there every once in a while. But at the very least, like subscribe to our channel, help us get those numbers up. Uh, YouTube.thesloopcast.com or just go to YouTube and search Sloopcast. You'll find us. Um, and if you listen to us uh, or watch us on YouTube exclusively, know that you can also find us on your podcast app of choice. Uh, that way the... Uh, that way the, the podcast is automatically downloaded to your phone. You can listen to it whenever you want and you don't have to feel like you have to watch us. You can just, just listen. And, uh, uh, Kyle, I think that's all the, all the plugs I feel like doing at the end of the show. Do you have anything in Kyle's corner for today? Um, we got a boom. We had a boom over the weekend, Jared, and excellent, not, excellent. <laughs> And it was not for football here. Um, we got our first commit for the 2024 class for the basketball team here. Sorry, we got um, Juni Mobley out a point guard over at Las Vegas here. He's a top 50 prospect here uh, over at, uh, oh, you, you probably heard this one here, Jared, uh, Bishop Gorman High School. I've heard of Bishop Gorman, yes. All right, but yeah, big big get here uh, early on for Chris Holtman. That's it. That's all I got. All right. Um, is that is that it? Is that the end of the show? That is it, Jared. All right. Um, tonight's ending music. Tonight's ending music uh, will be brought to you by. Hold on. Wait for it. Wait for it. Why won't my phone do the thing it's supposed to do? Um, tonight's ending music we brought to you by the Ohio Weather Band. Uh, they're kind of a folksy sort of band. Uh, and uh, so stick around for that. And yes. Yes, Zach. Weather. Everyone rejoice. They're the Ohio Weather Band. So, with all that being said, I'd like to encourage everyone to drink local beer, listen to local music, and of course, support your local podcasters. Once again, this is the Ohio Weather Band. <laughs>